Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Test Automation Engineer Certification. We are in chapter 8 that is continuous improvement and so far we have covered all the tutorials from here. This is the last tutorial talking about the sample questions related to chapter 8. Well, to get started with the sample questions, of course, the very first question we have for you is right here on your screen. And that is saying your organization maintain a regression test suite of over 1000 automated test cases that has been extremely reliable over the years. Recently, the development team has decided to modernize their technology stack and are currently refactoring how their front end operates. You notice that the application is far more API driven than the previous version and this has an impact on how UI elements are rendered. You anticipate this is going to impact the success rate of 75% of your automated test cases. What data analysis approaches should you use to determine how to fix your impacted automated test case? Indeed, the scenarios based question would always give you a lot of information within the scenario itself that what exactly are we trying to do? And there are some of the protocols which we have covered that when the adaptation layer changes or when the script is supposed to change, when exactly the architecture needs to be touch based with, and there are so many other options like data, etc. So we need to recall these informations and consider them as a factor to decide that when these transformations should take place, then what areas would be impacted. And that's where it becomes crucial for us to remember the syllabus and come to the right conclusion. So let's get started with the option. Option A says, Run the test cases several times in a CI CD pipeline, perform visual report analysis, and draw conclusions from a test histogram. Now, of course, indeed, uh, that looks very, very attractive options because the journey starts with running the test cases several times. Or, you know, let's not concentrate on several, but let's understand that you're running it, then performing visual report, and then drawing the conclusions, which would be very easy to attract. But when we talk about analyzing, the test histogram for 1000 test cases will be very time consumed. Of course, at the same time, we can already anticipate the impact of test cases without generating the histogram data. So the scenario is very clearly saying that you anticipate this is going to have impact of 75%. So doing duplicate work may not be recommended recommendations at this point of time, because your scenario is already clarifying that you will have a larger impact. So why would I run and do this repeated activity? So maybe, maybe again, right? This assumption that is anticipation of 75% impact is done based on certain analysis. Okay, so I will keep this on parking lot for some time. Let's cover the other options. If you don't have relevant, we'll talk about it. Option B says use AI algorithm and API schema validation tools. Uh, looks great because AI algorithm certainly can be used to self healing the test cases against the UI locator, because now the point is, the system is changing from UI to API, and uh, schema validation tool can be used to quickly assess the API schema base. Indeed, that was one of the straightforward two topics we have in the 8.1.1, where we told you that it is important to understand how exactly artificial intelligence can contribute in terms of UI testing, and second, what exactly is schema validation. So both the topics are blended together and could be one of the relevant options for me to take actions to transform this journey from the GUI to API. Let's go to option C. Option C says recreate automated test cases to replace the ones that are not working properly and will execute on the new application. Uh, again, recreating 75% of the test harness is not a feasible option when other options are available. So all I have to do is do a transformation on the adaptation layer with the GUI to API. And as it is being rendered, I can easily use them existingly without making much of the changes. So B looks relevant than that of C because I have options. If I talk about option D, option D says, uh, avoid automating certain test cases after analyzing exception logs, screenshots, and error messaging. Again, although logs and screenshots and error messages are valid data source to verify, eliminating test cases is not a viable option because you have a test suite which is meaningful to you just randomly removing the test cases just because it requires a little more effort may not be a good solution 
It might have a good reason to say that it is failing or probably it is out of scope or the transformation or the changes which are happening will not have these features anymore. Could be some easy hints to understand why should I go with option D. Okay, but these hints are not present in the scenario. So it certainly does not make any sense. And with that, we can easily conclude that the right answer for this particular question is B, that is use AI algorithm, that is artificial intelligence and API schema validation tools to deal with determining how to fix your impacted automated test cases, right? So that's how simple it could be at points, given that you have adhered to your syllabus and you are following it. Let's move on to the next question. The next question we have is number two. It says you're working on an automated regression test suite that takes too long a time to execute and its execution does not finish overnight. The test environment is only available for regression testing during the night. Running multiple suits in parallel is also not an option as the target system is expensive and exists only as a single instance. Now, what should be your next steps to ensure the test suite's execution finishes overnight? So there are multiple options here. Of course, uh, we may talk about, so we would, uh, generally consider things from the syllabus. Let's recall that it's always a golden practice that you recall what you have learned and then start looking at the option. Otherwise options can be very tricky. I would look forward to think as a first option that if I can run it parallel in multiple environment, which is restricted in the given scenario. They said this is not a possibility because your environment is expensive. The second option I would see is splitting the test cases or test suite into multiple parts. And uh, another option what I can see is trying to reduce the size. If I see there are multiple copies of things or there are multiple tests doing the same job, I can consolidate them. So these are some more options which we can look forward to. So in that context, given that we have some context with us, we can look at the options now. Option A says split the test suite into multiple parts, executing the parts on different nights of the week. So indeed, uh, this cannot be done together. So I may have one of the option is splitting up the test suite helps to ensure that the test execution is finished overnight. And this could be from the perspective of breaking them into multiple pieces because in one shot, it is not getting over in one night. However, the frequency would be a little different. For example, if I wanted to run regression every single day, then it might take two days of time or like to have a one round of regression testing, but at least it is feasible, right? You can do it overnight so that your daytime is utilized in the work. So it looks a great option to me. Let's go to option B. Option B says isolate test results, uh, result verification from the test execution and start the verification process after the test execution during morning hours. Morning hour is not a recommended option. Test result verification certainly, uh, again, cannot be isolated from the test execution process because uh, your task solution consists of many things as a part of it. So two important things to highlight here. If you see the first point here we are talking about is isolating the test result verification from the execution, which is not a recommended option. The reason is TAS is collection of every single component. And if we are separating it, we are trying to do that independently, which might not be the efficiency of the task. And second important thing, what you see here is certainly the, you know, during the morning hours, if I have to do regression during the morning hours, my system would be engaged and I may not be performing my regular work. So morning hours is not recommended as well. So B goes wrong with multiple context. If I take option C, it says rewrite the test using the keyword driven technique as that will be executed faster. Again, it is not stated anywhere that the keyword driven technique, technique executes faster. It's more of like the way it is being organized, right? Instead of scattering things here and there, you are calling those functions which you want to run at point of time, which is more of like systematically driving your test but it does not mean that the execution time would reduce in terms of using a framework like that. It totally will depend on number of tests to be executed. And if it remains the same, the approach of writing the script does not make a difference. Okay, let's go to option D. Option D says remove some tests from the test suite to reduce the overall execution time. Indeed, uh, that could be one of the option, but the point is it's not so blank that without any context, without any reason, if I can go and remove some of the tests, which could be reducing the size of the regression test suite, may be meaningless. Until unless I see a constraint specified in the scenario that uh, there are some test cases which are retired, 
or good for retirement, then I can call this option more relevant. But the point is, we don't have any such information provided in the scenario, so I cannot make some blind conclusions. And option E here says that remove any duplicate test from the test suite. Now that makes it a little more clear that we will first check if there are any duplicate tests, and that would be my baseline to define if I can reduce or not the size of the test automation suite, right? So this is where a regression test suite, sorry, not automation suite. So a test regression test suite. So indeed, uh, this matters to me in multiple contexts that what should be selected as the right answer. So here we have to select two right answers. And in this context, the right answers for this particular question are A, that is split the test suite into multiple parts, executing the parts on different nights of the week. And E, that is remove any duplicate test from the test suite, if any, it's not necessary you will have one. So this is how you would make a very conclusive statement and conclusion on what exactly would be the right answer. And second important thing, try to justify why the other options are incorrect. And that would be double sure that you are doing right. Let's move on to the next question. The next question we have is number three. And the number three says, as a test automation engineer, you are evaluating a new version of the core library, which of the correct order that can help you achieve these results. I think for this, you need to stick to the syllabus alone because there is no context, there is no justification. There's a process, the sequence matters, and I need to stick to that. Let's go ahead with the sequence here. It says create adoption plan, determine impact, update dependencies, perform pilot. Now that's something which we can talk about, but the adoption plan needs to occur after impact analysis. So without impact analysis, that is determine impact, how can you define an adoption plan? B says perform pilot, determine impact, create adoption plan, update dependencies. So this is the exact order as for the syllabus. That's to be very straightforward. C says update dependencies, determine impact. Again, determine impact is second, so I may not choose this option. Okay, updating dependencies obviously happens after the creation of plan, which is also at the last. So many factors here. And then D says determine impact, update dependency, create adoption plan and perform pilot, which is again in the random order. We got determining impact needs to occur after performing a pilot. So in that context, making it very clear that the right answer for this particular question is B, perform pilot, determine impact, create adoption plan and update dependencies would be the right order of dealing with this particular update, right? So I hope you got the context and tips and tricks of this entire syllabus as well because through these sample questions, all we wanted to convey you is how to tackle your questions during the examination. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.